Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we want to talk about the midpoint rule. So in the last video, we introduced the notion of a double integral and a multivariable integral. And basically the idea is that with a double integral, we've got some surface, we've got some surface like this, and then maybe it's like that, and then, um, I don't know, it's like a paraboloid or something, like a, like a paraboloid. You've got another thing up there, kind of, then it's like, kind of like that, you can pick, and you're, with your coordinate system, you can pick a region down here, of this region R, which is a rectangle for now, I can project up to here, and find some, and find whatever surface that's under, and then I can find the volume of this underneath the curve, between the curve and the Re in the bottom of the region, the xy plane. That's the idea. Um, instead of finding the area under a curve, we're finding the volume under a surface, which should make sense. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, cover the actual midpoint rule. So the midpoint rule um, in single variable calculus said, hey, um, I've got a function here. I want to find the area under it, but I don't know exactly how to. So we, we zoom in. We're going to zoom into this little bit here. And if I, if I get infinitesimally close, my, my function is going to be up here for that little bit. And then I'm going to have a little rectangle. And this little rectangle is going to kind of be my delta x here, the, the width. But then the height. How do we define the height? Because it depends on where I attach this, the top of this rectangle to my function. So I could do it to the left-hand side. In that case, I get an overestimate because I've got this little area here. If I do it to the right-hand side, I get an underestimate because I do this little area here. So what, instead, if I attached it to the middle, if I attached it to the middle of the rectangle, that way it's in the midpoint. So I get that little bit of area there, but then I get that little bit of area there. So it's a little bit more of a refined approximation. Now, of course, we can do that for um, the multivariable approach. So the idea is that we have a, um, we, we will have a prism, a rectangular prism, a perfect rectangular prism. And um, this here will be a square of some sort, depending on how we make our approximations. But this is our little infinitesimal prism. And then the surface for the midpoint rule will be attached at the center. So the definition says that the um, double integral over the region of f of x and y dA is going to be approximately equal to the sum from i equals 1 to m, uh, and then the sum from j equals 1 to n of f of x bar sub i, comma y bar sub j, so those are the averages, that's the middle, um, times the little um, area delta a. Let's try an example. So let's estimate the double integral over the region of um, x minus 3y quantity squared dA using um, two subintervals for both m and n for the region which is defined by the Cartesian product of 0, 2 times 1, 2. Okay, so now let's kind of divide this. So for x, we've got, we can draw this in our coordinate plane, our xy plane. So for x, we go from 0 to 2. So we're going out to here, 0 to 2. Then from y, we're going from 1 to 2. So here's 1 and here's 2. Right? So here is our, or here is our region. There's our region. And we're dividing it into two subintervals for the m side and two subintervals for the n side. So if I'm dividing uh, my x into 2, then I've got 1, which is going to be 1 here, and then um, 2 there. So, and then if we divide it again, um, for the end, then we get these four subrectangles. And we're going to be finding our heights there, 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 and there. And these are all the midpoints. So we've got to find the midpoints. So for the first one, we get x bar sub 1 equals 1 half. And then x bar sub 2 equals 3 halves, right? Because this is going to be 1 half. This is going to be 3 halves. Then we do y sub 1 bar is equal to 5 fourths, which is going to be here. And then uh, y bar sub 2 is going to be here at 7 fourths. 
So um, now we got to find our delta A, and our delta A is going to be the length times the width. So the length here is 1, and the width here is 1 half. So we get um, delta A equals 1 half. So now I plug in for the midpoint rule formula, and we get that the double integral of f of x, y, dA um, is equal to 1 half f of 1, 2, 5, 4, or f of 1 half 5 fourths, plus 1 half f of 1 half 7 fourths plus one-half f of three-halves five-fourths, plus one-half f of three-halves seven-fourths. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just evaluate this function. We evaluate this function here, f of x, y equals x minus three y squared at all of these points, at all of these ordered pairs. What we get is one-half times negative 67 sixteenths plus one-half times negative 139 sixteenths plus one-half negative 51 sixteenths plus one-half times negative 123 over 16. And we get negative 95 over 8. So that's a good approximation. Now, for the past two videos, we've been talking about how we can approximate um, all of these uh, double integrals, right? With either your double Riemann sum or the midpoint rule. And you can use Simpson, a, a variation of Simpson's rule, the trapezoidal rule, but that gets increasingly convoluted. And obviously the best way to deal with doing a double integral is taking that double integral exactly. So to do that, we're going to learn some new tricks. We're going to learn um, the iterated integral, the partial integral, and Fubini's theorem, which is super important. And then, after that, we're going to notice that sometimes we want to integrate over regions that are not Cartesian products. They might be circles. They might be random shapes. And we'll look at that in, in later videos. But this is going to be a really fun unit. It's going to be a long unit, but it's going to be a fun unit. And I'm so excited with where we're about to go with it. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.